So extremely recently we've talked about a resolution to a major astronomical mystery. The mystery observable in radio frequencies known as the odd radio circles. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. But the reason I wanted to start with this is because it actually took approximately 4 years to solve this and to explain what's going on. But it's now been almost 20 years since the original detection of fast radio bursts, that other radio mystery, and we still have no idea what's going on here, despite the fact that so many are being detected pretty much at all times from every single direction. As a matter of fact, if our eyes could see radio waves, you would literally be seeing this, if not more of these. There will be tiny tiny flashes of light coming from every single direction in outer space, some lasting a few milliseconds, some a little bit longer, some a little bit shorter, but there will be flashes every second, no matter what. And by itself this is really mind-blowing because it was only officially discovered back in 2007. And as always, completely by accident. But since that time, several thousand FRBs have already been confirmed and we know that so many more are missed at all times. Despite of that, no current model can explain all of them and most models cannot even explain the ones where we know the source. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss some of these new discoveries about fast radio bursts once again, find out what the scientists learned so far in the last few months, talk about potential explanations for some of them, and talk about new mysteries that were discovered in recent studies. And let's start with one of the most recent discoveries of essentially the furthest FRB ever found. The fast radio burst discovered back in 2022, coming to us from a location when the universe was only 5 billion years old. And obviously to even be able to see this, it had to be a very powerful FRB, which is of course one of their biggest mysteries. How can these events be so powerful and produce so much radio emissions at the same time, with all this just lasting a few milliseconds? And if you know the answer, I guess leave it in the comments below. And so based on these recent observations from the Hubble Space Telescope, the researchers discovered that the location here was very different from a lot of other detections. It seems to have come from a collection of galaxies, possibly up to 7 galaxies, that seem to be merging, interacting, and obviously forming new stars. And this is a really important discovery because previous detections were usually from much smaller isolated galaxies that don't seem to have a lot of activity. These were normally quiescent dwarf galaxies that would be practically invisible otherwise. Yet here we have this ancient galaxy that's most likely very active, seems to be producing a lot of stars, and is obviously filled with recent supernova remnants. And at least some of these supernova remnants produce powerful neutron stars, including possibly magnetars, the most likely culprits responsible for at least some of the fast radio bursts. And the reason we know this, or the reason the scientists think so, is because of the detection from the closest FRB, the one that came from our own galaxy, the Milky Way. I'll talk about this in a few seconds. And so because we know that magnetars usually only last a few thousand years before shutting down, these active galaxies are expected to have quite a lot of magnetars, and so detecting a magnetar-based FRB is not unusual. But nevertheless, detecting this system and detecting an FRB coming from it is of course really rare. As a matter of fact, the collection of these galaxies is rare by itself as well. So early in the universe at these distances, less than 1% of all galaxies are usually in these very compact groups. And so here we have 7 dwarf galaxies extremely close to one another, very likely forming a much larger galaxy in the early universe. So definitely a really cool discovery. But let's go from the farthest FRB to once again the closest. This was detected back in 2020 and it was an incredible discovery. It came from a known magnetar right here in the Milky Way galaxy, which made this object a major target for a lot of different studies. And one of the telescopes that collected a lot of data about this magnetar was the Chinese FAST, the largest radio telescope on the planet. And so here, this telescope detected 795 pulses in just 16 hours over a 13 day period. And most importantly, a lot of these pulsations seem to be slightly different and are technically not even the same as a lot of other FRBs. They also seem to come from different regions around this object and thus have very different origins. Naturally though, because this was in the Milky Way galaxy, it's a lot easier to discover where a lot of these signals are coming from. And so here some signals resembled radio pulses that we usually find around objects like pulsars. They are similar to FRBs, 
but are generally much less powerful, but are also very periodic, repeating every time. But we know that most magnetars do not emit radio pulses because of their very powerful magnetic fields that generally prevent this from happening. For some reason though, this particular magnetar occasionally becomes a radio pulsar, and it seems to do so in between these fast radio burst emissions. And so this magnetar seems to possess properties of both pulsars and other magnetars, but seems to shift here and there, allowing it to emit radio emissions once in a while. But these less energetic emissions seem to generally come from the same location around the magnetar, possibly from the same region in the magnetosphere of this object. But fast radio bursts seem to come from different locations and go in different directions, implying that the overall mechanism seems to be entirely different, and once again highlighting the mystery of their origin. And what's even stranger was the additional discovery from some of the other FRBs that are known to repeat as well. And this was a detection from the first ever repeated FRB detected back in 2012. Here the scientists discovered extremely short FRBs that only lasted microseconds. With all this of course implying that fast radio bursts seem to also have different length and can be as short as a few microseconds or as long as a few milliseconds, although I'm sure we're going to be discovering even longer ones in the future. But then there were other discoveries from another repeated FRB discovered more recently in 2022. This FRB was active for several months but was producing extremely unpredictable events without easily observable patterns. It produced 35 FRBs over 540 hours, and each of them appeared to have somewhat unique energy signature. Interestingly though, there was a bit of a drop off in central frequencies, with the overall frequencies, if combined and if looked at together, creating a kind of a whistle, or basically a kind of a decrease in frequencies over time. And so over two months of observations, there was a significant drop off in overall frequency, equivalent to about 6 MHz per day. It's sort of unclear why this was happening and why these frequencies changed or basically decreased, but to the scientists behind the study, it highlights the importance of observing all of this in a much wider radio band compared to just focusing on a single frequency. Because chances are by discovering why the frequency changed, we might be able to actually discover the true source of this object. Currently, it's unknown. But there has been a discovery of a couple of sources from some of the FRBs, and the source here is a little bit strange. In essence, it's an object that's sometimes referred to as a hypernebula, or I guess, a really really massive, extremely large nebula, larger than anything we're used to. And so now, at least two FRB sources have been traced to these extremely dense and very magnetized clouds that usually contain some kind of a powerful source in the middle that illuminates the gas producing the cloud. And though normally, like in the helix nebula that you see right here, the source is some kind of a white dwarf in the middle, in these hypernebula, it's most likely something much, much more powerful, and possibly once again a magnetar. And so here the scientists discovered the source of this particular FRB, and it seems to be a nebula that's about 30 light years across, or about 3 times as large as Crab Nebula. And here they were even able to measure the luminosity of the object, revealing that it's about 100,000 times brighter than our Sun, with the overall luminosity possibly once again suggesting that it is a magnetar after all. With this nebula actually being relatively young, less than 900 years old, with the measurements from the magnetar suggesting that it's anywhere between 4 and 1900 years old. Or basically that all of this is extremely young. But once again, what's exactly causing the FRBs and why they're being repeated over and over is currently unknown. Interestingly though, both of these hypernebula seem to be in somewhat unusual galaxies. A very low mass dwarf galaxy where we don't really expect a lot of activity, and of course these massive hypernebula. Yet somehow, two of these galaxies seem to contain them. And though this doesn't take us closer to answering the question of the origin of these phenomena, it does show us that FRBs seem to come from a variety of sources, but in many cases are potentially linked to magnetars. Or at least very powerful, very bright objects in the center. But so far, no single model can explain everything and no single explanation has been provided that satisfies all of these observations. For example, one of the recent studies potentially suggested that some of them might even come from the merger of neutron stars, specifically because magnetospheres around these neutron stars experience dramatic effects right before the collision, which can produce FRBs. But despite of this, the analysis of various gravitational wave detections of black hole and neutron star collisions 
So far, I did not connect a single one of these events to any fast radio bursts. And though the theory behind this seems to be pretty sound, so far, no observational evidence. Which basically means that in the end, we're not even remotely closer to solving their mystery. It's been almost 20 years, and there's just no solution to any of this, but even more mysteries and more observations that seem to reveal that this is a really fascinating phenomenon and seems to be ubiquitous. It seems to be everywhere, no matter where you look, and happens at all times. But completely invisible in anything but radio light, and only visible if you're able to detect extremely quick signals. Pretty much most of them only lasted milliseconds. And well, anyway, at least for now that's kind of all we have from all of these recent discoveries and all of these recent attempts to solve the FRB mystery. And even though we solved the odd radio circle mystery, it looks like it will take at least a few more years, and possibly even a decade or two, to finally find a satisfactory solution that explains at least most of FRBs we've detected so far. Even for the ones involving magnetars and even for the ones coming from the Milky Way galaxy, there is really no good mechanism yet that explains what's going on. But once there are more updates, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Check out previous discoveries and all of the recent studies in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.